Speaker, I seek leave to move the following motion. That this House 1 notes a the government has released highly confidential personal information of Centrelink customers to the media as part of a vindictive political campaign to punish some of Australia's most vulnerable people for speaking out against the government's robo-debt mess and b that there are serious questions about the legality of the government's actions and whether they constitute breaches of the Privacy Act. Two, calls on the Minister for Human Services to attend the House to provide, provide a full account of a the specific provision of the Privacy Act or any other legislation that the government claims gives the legal right to release this highly confidential personal information to the media and b the involvement of himself, his office, his department and Centrelink in releasing this highly confidential personal information to the media and three condemns the minister for releasing the personal information of Australians for vindictive political purposes. Is leave granted? Leave is not granted. The member for Barton, the member for Barton has the call. Uh, it is a scandal. I move that so much of the standing and sessional orders be suspended as would prevent the member for Barton from moving the following motion forthwith. And the motion is that this House notes a the, a, the government has released highly confidential personal information of Centrelink customers to the media as part of a vindictive political campaign to punish some of Australia's most vulnerable people for speaking out against, against the government's robo-debt mess and b that there are serious questions about the legality of the government's actions and whether they constitute breaches of the Privacy Act. Two, calls on the Minister for Human Service to attend the House to provide a full account of a the specific provisions of the Privacy Act for any, other, for any other legislation that the government claims gives it the legal right to release this highly confidential personal information to the media and b the involvement of himself, his office, his department and Centrelink in releasing this highly confidential personal information to the media and three condemns the minister for releasing this personal information of Australians for vindictive political purposes. Uh, Mr Speaker, this motion, motion must be debated today. The robo-debt debacle and the deeply flawed Centrelink debt recovery scheme has gone on for so long with no real answers from the government. Mm -hmm. This is emblematic of the problem that this government's heartless, vindictive and totally out of touch is with the Australian community. The government ha isn't just content harassing aged pensioners, those receiving the DSP or others who, have, who are receiving a Centrelink payment. Mr Speaker, they have made it clear if you speak out, they will target you. If you disagree with the government public, public, publicly, they will leak your private details to the media in an effort to discredit and smear you. That private information might include your relationship status, the number of times Centrelink tried to contact you, and they won't mention that they're using an old contact number. In fact, Mr Speaker, that information could contain any number of private issues. The first you will know about these breaches is a phone call or an email from a journalist. The minister won't even give you a call to let you know they've shared your information. This is not right, Mr Speaker. Whether legally permissible or not, the, or not these are deeply unethical actions by the minister and the department. Leaking private information is not something a government should do lightly. I accept there may be a need to correct the record at times. At, and, and, and in some cases in the public interest, but it has to be done with the appropriate checks and balances. Stunningly, the department has revealed to media this morning that at no point did the secretary formally authorise the release of this confidential information. And I will repeat that. Stunningly, the department has revealed to media this morning that at no point did the secretary formally authorise the release of this confidential information. There appears to have been no formal process in place for this drastic action. Shameful. They just did it because they were angry, because they wanted revenge on those who have spoken publicly about their failing administration of Centrelink. 
Well, Minister, today I call on you to stop focusing on vendettas and seeking revenge to get on with fixing this broken system. I also call on the Minister to table the legal advice he has had, which gives him permission to smear, smear people seeking answers, or his advice from Secretary of the Department, which authorises these releases. If he can't do that, then at least he can do is explain to the House his actions. Since late, since late last year, Centrelink has been sending out 20,000 letters a week, one in five to people who owe no debt at all. If you get that letter and Centrelink decides you do owe a debt which you dispute, you face hours on the phone sorting through pay slips and tax returns, trying to prove you in as innocent. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the minister needs to explain to this parliament and to this and to this uh, to the Australian people how this information about individuals ended up with media outlets in Australia. It is any surprise that people are so angry that they want to tell their stories publicly. 1.7 million people will receive these letters over the next three years. Sending them a message, if you don't owe a debt, we have raised against you. Suffer in silence or we will attack you. He can see the problems he will face if he doesn't fix this system soon, and he is desperate to keep quiet. Turning the political machinery of the department and the minister's office against private citizens is a grave act and one with which no, no one in this place should undertake lightly. The robo-debt system has seen outrage just not from individual members of the public but from many organisations, including ACOS, in, including the Welfare Rights Network, disabled people organisations and the Welfare Rights Alliance. Should they be fearful that any government funding they re receive will be cut? Is that the kind of government we have on the other side? Yeah, right. What about the Liberals who have spoken out about this system? Will the Minister for Human Services be leaking private information about Senator Abetz in the other place, uh, who said the Centrelink had failed the Australian people? Will the Liberal Premier of Tasmania be, sent, be, be focused on? Yeah. I was the Minister for several years in the New South Wales Parliament, and I would have thought very carefully about whether whether it was acceptable to release confidential information to the media. We serve the people in this place, and it's not for us to target them through the media. If the minister is unhappy about people raising concerns about this poor administration of Centrelink, he can attack the opposition, he can attack me, but not private individuals outside this place. Yeah. This is a dangerous path, and I call on those opposite to pull their colleagues into line. Good governments don't seek to silence criticism with threats and intimidation. They try to avoid it through good governance, none of what we have seen in this Centrelink deba debacle. I read the minister's comments in the Telegraph this morning about the disunity on the other side. He said, get on with the job of governing. Well, I say this to the minister, perhaps you could apply that sentiment to Centrelink's. Fix your mess instead of attacking the most vulnerable. Yeah. There is a very clear narrative developing around this government. They are still obsessed with the Joe Hockey's lifters and leaners. Look at the record. Look at the record on holding poor people, vulnerable people hostage about the NDIS. Look at their actions yesterday about penalty rates, attacking young people, attacking women, attacking the rights of workers in this country. Look at what they have done in Centrelink. Is it public? Is, is, and the public says it's not fair game and these political attacks are the same thing. I am so, pleased to see that the minister has made some changes, but they have not gone far enough. This system is broken, and the very fact that you think you can roll the same system out to our elderly people, people on the age pe pension and people on DSP is just an outra outrage. Um, I want an apology. I want an apology, and so do people in the Labor Party, to those that you have targeted, to those that you have smeared, to people who have spoken out, exercising their rights, and they have been attacked for it. I want an apology for Anne Foley, an age pensioner who had a pension cut when a false debt was raised. I want an apology for Michael Griffin, who has issued $3,000 debt, which was just taken down to $50. And, he should and, and the minister and this government should apologise to the people who woke up to find their private information in the papers without their permission. In the papers without their permission. But he should also apologise to his colleagues. He has made them look bad. Those opposite 
all of you should hang your head in shame and you can look down, you can look at your iPads, you can look at your phones, you can look like you're not interested, but you've got the same letters into your offices as we have. The minister doesn't understand that the real reason individuals are in the media talking about their woeful record on Centrelink management is because they are being treated bad badly. This is not a big song and dance about how quickly his debt hotline can be answered. It is not that. People are waiting hours on hold. People know what the service is like in Centrelink. Centrelink staff are distressed to the point because they have received a, a, a circular telling them, even if you see a mistake, just pretend you didn't. That's effectively what has happened from the other side. Mr Speaker, people are angry, and the best way the minister can get them to stop talking to the media to do his job. Mr Speaker, the, this minister and this government should step up to the box and explain to this House, explain to this House what's going on uh, to fix the broken lit centre list system, and explain to this House how the private information of individuals have ended up in me media outlets in this country. And if the minister and the senior minister won't do that, <laughs> then maybe the prime minister should step in and take control of this and do something decent for the Australian people. <laughs> Is the motion seconded? The member for Jagger Jagger. Thank you, Mr.